Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Anthony Edwards reveals his message to Micah Parsons after Game 4. Minnesota Timberwolves star Anthony Edwards on Tuesday made a promise to Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons after his team's do-or-die victory over the Dallas Mavericks. The Timberwolves avoided the series sweep with a 105-100 win in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals to shift the series back to Minnesota. After the contest, Edwards was seen talking to Parsons in one of the hallways at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. Edwards was heard guaranteeing he would see Parsons back in Dallas for Game 6. During his post-game press conference, Edwards was asked about his conversation with Parsons. The AE1S are Edwards' first signature shoe with Adidas. Parsons was seen courtside sporting a Luka Donich Mavericks jersey while also wearing Edwards' sneakers. Edwards made a similar guarantee to a Denver Nuggets locker room attendant during the Western Conference semifinals. The Timberwolves star made good on his promise then. Edwards tallied team highs across the board with 29 points, 10 rebounds, and 9 assists in Game 4. Why Mike Zimmer is back in his element as the Cowboys' DC It was only a rookie minicamp in early May without any pads or even any full-team drills, but Mike Zimmer could not help but smile. After two years away from the game, he was in his element again, on a field coaching football early in his second stint as the Dallas Cowboys' defensive coordinator. This last couple weeks when we go out here and we're doing the phase two of the off-season program stuff, it's been a lot of fun to get out with the players and start to understand them and try to teach them as much as I can about not just the position but the other positions and why we do certain things, Zimmer said. I think that's been the best part. Zimmer is back in a familiar place, if not the same facility. The Cowboys moved from Valley Ranch, where Zimmer worked from 1994 to 2006 as a Cowboys assistant, to the star, which the Cowboys have called home since 2016. Some of the faces remain the same, like the Jones family and other members of the front office and personnel staff. For the past two years, following an eight-year run as the Minnesota Viking head coach, he stayed around the game, doing a podcast for the 33rd Team website with former Cincinnati Bengals head coach Marvin Lewis. They would be given topics to discuss and each would do his own prep work and just talk ball, as coaches like to do. They studied trends in the game, such as teams matching up against bigger personnel groups with five defensive backs versus staying with a base defense against three wide receiver sets. You miss that kind of detail, the preparation and everything that goes into it, when not coaching, said Lewis, who is now the assistant head coach with the Las Vegas Raiders under head coach Antonio Pierce. Greg Ellis was a defensive end for the Cowboys when Zimmer was named defensive coordinator in 2000. He now works for Zimmer as an assistant defensive line coach. I have tremendous respect for him, as when I played for him, because he's a tremendous teacher of the game, Ellis said. He taught me a lot about the game. So to be on the other side of it with him, it's something different for me. So Zimmer doesn't yell at him as a coach. See, you said that, I didn't, Ellis said. But I agree with you. Not that Zimmer is easy on his coaches. He has had to teach what he wants in his new scheme to a staff that includes a number of holdovers from former D.C. Dan Quinn, who left Dallas in February to become the head coach of the Washington Commanders. He holds coaches to be responsible, Ellis said. I've been around him long enough to know whatever you tell him you're going to do, he's going to hold you to it. He's not going to forget it. Zimmer is not inheriting a reclamation program on defense. The Cowboys were number five in yards and points allowed last season. In three years with Quinn, the Cowboys led the NFL in takeaways with 93, 59 interceptions, 34 fumble recoveries. In 2021, cornerback Trayvon Diggs led the NFL with 11 interceptions. Last season, cornerback Darren Bland led the NFL with nine interceptions and set an NFL record with five returns for touchdowns. 
Then there's pass rusher Micah Parsons, who has 40.5 sacks in his first three years and has finished second twice and third once in Defensive Player of the Year voting. In 2007, the Bengals' defense ranked 24th and 27th in points and yards allowed per game before Zimmer joined Lewis in Cincinnati. In 2008, they finished 19th and 12th with five new starters. In 2013, the year before he became the Vikings' head coach, Minnesota's defense finished last in points allowed and second to last in yards allowed per game. In Zimmer's first year, they finished 11th and 14th, respectively, with nine new starters. With the Cowboys, he is looking at using at least four new starters compared to 2023. It's like I told the defense the first day I got here. I said, this is a different deal for me. Usually when I come in, the defense is not good. You know? They're pretty darn good, Zimmer said. So it's a little different for me because we have to advance some of the things they were doing good and try to improve on the things they weren't doing as good. But for the most part they played pretty darn good, and we're going to try to accentuate that and maybe be a little bit more technique-oriented, maybe a little bit more disciplined. Some of those things. Dallas Cowboys expected to replace Dak Prescott with dual-threat superstar QB. The Dallas Cowboys may be entering their final season with Dak Prescott as the team's franchise QB. So far, Jerry Jones has made it clear he plans to let Prescott play out the final year of his current contract, which leaves the team strapped when it comes to paying other talent as so much of this year's salary cap money is going to the Dallas Signal Caller. Many believed it would be a no-brainer decision to extend Prescott this offseason so the Cowboys would be able to free up room and fill voids on the roster that will help them make a legitimate Super Bowl run. Jerry Jones has never parted ways with a franchise-level quarterback in his prime during his near 40-year run as the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Troy Aikman stayed here until he retired, and Tony Romo was only released because Prescott emerged as the new franchise STAQB during his injury absence. Dak Prescott knows he can easily receive $50 million-plus on his next NFL contract. If the Dallas Cowboys aren't willing to pay it, another QB needy team, Las Vegas Raiders, anyone, will happily pay it. Prescott has lacked postseason success, a 2-5 record, up to this point of his career, but teams will be more than happy to pay top dollar for a QB who puts up top 10 stats annually. While the recent narrative has been that both Jones and Prescott are prepared to let the final year of the deal play out and go from there, ESPN insider Jeremy Fowler says the Cowboys do in fact want to extend their franchise QB, but have been hesitant because of a very specific reason. Speaking on SportsCenter, Fowler reported that contracts negotiations are complicated because Prescott carries a $61 million cap for the 2024 season well, the Dallas Cowboys want to re-sign Dak Prescott. I continue to hear that talks and negotiations have been a little passive, but they have told Dak directly that they want him there long term. It's just complicated because he's got a $61 million cap hit on the final year of his deal, a new contract is going to have to be a huge number. So they want to tread carefully a little bit, as my understanding. If you jump out, you make an offer, if it's not where it needs to be initially, then things get complicated. They've already negotiated with him three or four years ago, and that took a year and a half. So it's a long process and they know it's going to take a while, so it's something they're probably slow playing. It's a little bit of a stare-off. But I think sometime this summer, this will heat up because it has to and you know he wants to stay a cowboy but he is prepared for the notion that he could be a free agent next year. Like he's open to that reality because things haven't really launched off yet. Despite coming off a season where he was in the MVP conversation for most of the year, there's a real possibility Prescott and the Cowboys part ways after the 2025 season. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Shadur Sanders? Leave your opinion in the comments.